Thank you all for joining our session. As Arena mentioned, uh, we're very passionate about off-chain compute. Off-chain compute is really only interesting when you can tie the trustlessness guarantees of a distributed consensus technology like FEVM. So my uh, brief session is gonna talk about the power of on-chain state, bridging it to invoke off-chain compute. We really wanna have the best of both worlds. We wanna have our cake and eat it too. And of course, please go to our GitHub page, check us out, smash the like button, and all that good stuff. Uh, so this session is really about making your hearts, uh, giving you what you, uh, get, making your dreams come true, effectively. So uh, from a demo perspective, these are some things that I love. Uh, I love the movie Back to the Future. Does anybody else like Back to the Future? Yeah, yeah, thank you, thank you. Um, I also like uh, 19th century uh, French modernist painters. I don't know if you guys knew that about me. That's that's a, that's a thing about me. I also really love off-roading. So these are the three things that I love the most. And this is what we're going to use Water Lily to, uh, to bring to bear. So before we get that, let's kind of walk our way up the stack. So Irina gave you some perspective on Bakoyao, which is compute over data. Um, you can think of it as sort of an L2. Um, it has a lot of ties to, um, to EVM. If L1 is the sort of um, the, the Filecoin uh, chain or the virtual machine there, Bakia would exist as a layer on top of it. And there's definitely some like, you know, debate about how those fit together. But effectively, this is, is how I want you to have sort of a mental model of compute. Project Lilypad is the first component to invoke uh, back at y'all from any smart contract. Hopefully you will be building FVM smart contracts soon if you're not already. And when you're building those smart contracts, you might think, wow, I want to be able to invoke, you know, some communication with the outside world, or I want to do some complex math that's too heavy to fit into my smart contract. In fact, this is actually a really important turning point for Web3 in general. There, there are a few off-chain solutions, uh, off-chain decentralized compute uh, platforms today but being able to invoke them from a trustless chain is a very unique thing. So this is one of the first projects to ever let you do this. And hopefully this will inspire you to come up with your own interesting project ideas. And so yes, this, this project itself, the source code's available. Please check it out at uh, Lilypad on the GitHub URL there. And just to give you a brief walkthrough of, of how this is gonna work, from the contract that you write, you're gonna invoke a back of your job. You're gonna um, call this Lilypad contract through a, an interface that's easily available. Lilypad contract is then going to broadcast an event to the FVM chain. It's going to actually do, um, I forget the specific function. I think it's dot send. It, anyways, it's going to put that function on chain so that it's written, it's, it's uh, broadcasted on chain. There's a daemon right now, which is the bridge between Lilypad and, um, and the compute nodes, which is going to be listening for that event. It's going to say, oh, okay, someone created a, a request to, to run an off-chain compute job. Then it's going to actually run this job here. Number three and number four is going to be something like maybe a standard CLI invocation. It's, it's very close and native to the back of your network. Over time, you'll probably see these consolidate a bit more. There's opportunity to further decentralize and such, but this is just a good kind of like initial uh, implementation for, for reference. And then the back of your network will actually run the job. Most importantly, it will return the results to its preferred medium of storage, which is IPFS in this case. So the data is going to live on IPFS. It's going to post that back to the LilyPad contract. Um, and then the user, uh, the user results will be returned to the user contract. So that contract has then requested some off-chain compute. It's happened. Now the results come back. You could do some very interesting things with it. We'll show you guys some examples here in a minute. And then you celebrate. You have your, your results uh, ready to go. So Project Water Lily, uh, in order to showcase the power of this end-to-end -end capability, we thought, let's do a couple things. Let's do something that benefits humanity. Um, let's do something that shows off some of the latest AI capability, in particular, stable diffusion and neural style transfer. And let's also showcase FVM payments as a part of this, uh, this capability. So if you've never heard of stable diffusion, the terminology comes from when you take dye, drop it into water, and then the dye slowly um, stabilizes effectively, kind of in a, an interesting, funky looking color mesh. This is very similar uh, technique that they use for stable diffusion and image generation where you start with a lot of noise and over time you refine that, that randomly generated noise to an image that matches uh, a text prompt that you get it. So in this case, this is a person that's half Yoda, half Gandalf. Over a series of iterations through the machine learning model, it actually gets to something that looks like 
uh, Yoda and Gandalf. Now that computation is important because this is an example of a computation that's way too large to happen on a smart contract. FEM smart contracts are very powerful because they're trustless and they're verifiable, but they're not as open-ended. They're not as, um, you can't do arbitrary compute like this. So this isn't a good example of, of what you'd want to do. And here's a, an example of what these might look like where you say um, uh, for adding to stable diffusion, a thing called neural style transfer, where you say, okay, I have a picture here of a nice car out in the distance. Um, and then I want to apply uh, a classical painter style to it. Now it's sort of will refashion that neural style transfer accordingly. So we're going to do two things. One, we're going to generate stable diffusion. And secondly, we're going to apply neural style transfer, but we're going to do it for those artists that might be underrepresented or artists that haven't had an opportunity to commercialize their work, hopefully provide a little bit of benefit to humanity. And if you're interested in sort of the technology behind that technique, this is a, a nice diagram from um, towards, uh, towards machine learning or towards uh, data science rather, uh, which goes into more depth on how that works. So if you will open up your browser to waterlily.ai, we're going to pull up a quick demo of the waterlily capability here. Um, and this is publicly available right now. You can use the mainnet version, which is just waterlily.ai. You can also go to waterlily and add in the network Filecoin hyperspace, and you can start working with it. You can type in some text here. In this case, I want uh, rainbow unicorn. Um, and then what you'll do is you'll choose an artist whose work you want to, or style rather, you want to uh, apply to your generated image. We've pre-built these models with artists in the past. So when I choose, let's say, Tanya here, in this case, is some examples of the different types of artists. We've taken backlog of, let's say, 40 images from those artists, and we've trained their style. So what we're doing here in this case, when I say generate image, this is invoking the contract on FEM first. That contract, let me go back to the visual here so I don't have to use my hands too much. We're calling that contract on the FEM network. FEM is then going to build the style transfer and the uh, stable diffusion on the back end. It's going to return our results to LilyPad contract, and we're going to see our output here in the user experience. So let's say Rainbow Unicorn with um, lasers. It's going to be a very powerful Rainbow Unicorn. Okay, it's going to submit the job to the uh, FEM network. It's going to prompt me to pay in T fill here. Okay, it's uh, not too expensive, a fraction of T fill. So I'm going to confirm that. Now it's going to create the transaction on FEM. FEM is going to go through its process and it's going to invoke back Yao on the back end. But like any good demo, uh, this is going to be a bit of a baking show. So I want to show you guys some results, some examples of what it looks like. So coming back to our slides here. This is an example of saying, let's take the style of some public domain artists, in this case, some uh, 18th century uh, hand-drawn art, and generate some fun images, like this is what Barack Obama would look like if that artist had drawn it, or Mickey Mouse, in this case. Um, and so for me, my favorites, DeLorean, 4x4, and Off-Road, this is, this is my dream. This is what I'm going to hopefully uh, be able to buy one day when someone decides to make it. Uh, but until then, this is, uh, this is the, the next best thing. So hopefully this gives you a, a good sense of invocating these arbitrary large compute jobs off-chain, but still with the trustlessness and the verifiability of FVM. Uh, there's a lot more that we're going to start building with this. So there's a lot of projects in the greater Web3 ecosystem that could benefit from this capability. There are a number of DAOs that we work with where they want to... Um, enhance or I would say augment their existing membership capability. We have a group that we work with in the science space that says, you know, if we could do some off-chain um, bioinformatics workloads to, um, to simulate protein folding and then maybe capture that as like an NFT and then our, our members will have this NFT of this unique science work that they generated off-chain, that would be a fun kind of validation of their membership. We have some folks that work in the DeFi space that generate very high quality data sets. Uh, you know, one of the things that the DeFi space is always chasing is better yield, better returns. Where should I put my money in different DeFi projects? And in today's world, most of these uh, smart contracts, even the best order routers, rely on computations that have to happen on chain using current state data. But the big, the, the big next threshold for DeFi is to say, if I can take into account all the history of the Ethereum chain and I can make more complex calculations like you would do in high frequency trading, for example, 
you can make more sophisticated decisions, you can increase your yield, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and then lastly, uh, one interesting one is decentralized social media. Um, has anyone heard of Blue Sky or Lens Protocol in the audience? Okay, that's about at least half, maybe more. So this is a tremendous burgeoning space. And in the sense of, of social media, you may want to be able to um, not have to rely on the tech company's um, determination of what content you should see being fed by their algorithm. You may want to have your own algorithm. And if that's the case, you're going to need a more complicated off-chain compute system to help build your algorithm of feeding the type of content that you'd like to have. So these are just some examples of the types of things that we're hoping to provide in the future with a bridge. Thank you guys so much for your time. Uh, please follow us, like us, and all the details there. And then um, thank you so much. That's all I have. I, I assume the stable diffusion example is, is like we can run some compute and it's tied to an FVM job. But there's nothing really about the FVM that you need in order to run stable diffusion for unless I'm missing something where there's a specific advantage of bolting the FVM onto a, the front of it. No, no, you, you make a good point. Uh, for stable diffusion, these sorts of AI, I mean, even if it was chat GBT or LLM and things like that, uh, you do not necessarily have to have FDM yeah. in general sense. And if you go to the docs.bakayao.org uh, page, you'll see a bunch of machine learning inference examples yeah. like OCR and fun stuff like yeah. that. So you can, you can invoke it directly as well. So I, I guess what I'm asking is like... Uh, what what are you hearing from customers where there are specific FVM related uh, off chain compute uh, that that is uh, that is driving this? Like, where where does customer demand come from here? Yeah, yeah, yeah that, that's that's it. So uh, just to, to replay your question, where is demand coming from for the combination of FVM and off chain compute? There's a few in addition to the um, sort of the DeFi and the the science example before. There's a couple others where um, I think Matt had alluded to these data DAOs uh, in the past is a, an important use case. And so these data DAOs, like, like one in particular that I, that I uh, try to follow is one called Lagrange DAO with a person named uh, 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 Charles Cow, uh, a Phil Swan team. And they're building a, a data DAO very similar to the work that um, uh, Ocean Protocol has done. Ocean Protocol has been a leader in the sense of like having private compute for a very long time. And the premise is essentially, I want to retain ownership of some private data set, but I also want to be able to sell it in certain circumstances and ensure a certain amount of privacy to compute over those data sets. And so in those cases, when you need a transaction, Bakuyao itself does not have an economic, a native economic component yet. So FVM provides that. And then it also provides the sort of the public marketplace built in for those data sets. So I think like with the data DAOs and some of the other things that are being built on FVM, the off-chain compute will be a nice complement just to expand FVM's capabilities generally. I think that's probably where demand's gonna come from. Um, I just have a clarifying question. So where does the, I think the previous talk talked about Bakiao brings compute to the data. Where does the data that, where is the model that encompasses the data actually live in this uh, example? Yeah, and just to clarify your question, you mean when you say where does the model for the data live or? Or like, you're submitting a job to AI stable diffusion model, model as set of weights that have to exist somewhere. Yeah. And yeah. like, where, where is it? I guess, where is it running? Like where, where is that uh, diffusion model stored? Very good question. Yeah, and, and so to Arena's point uh, previously, like, uh, you know, Bakuya has done a couple of things. One, it's implemented compute along with data that lives in IPFS, which may or may not always be native to where the data lives, but there's larger data sets that live in Filecoin larger data sets that are too expensive to move. And so in those situations, we'd like to send the Docker container workload or the ML training workload to where the data lives at the Filecoin storage provider. How does that work with ceiling on ceiling? Do you have to have some sort of relationship with the storage provider as a compute node in order to make that work? That's exactly the right question. Uh, the way it's gonna work is that initially the focus will be on unsealed data sets effectively um, because there are some, uh, depending on who you ask, maybe 50% of the data in Filecoin might be retained as an unsealed data set. So we'd like to give them better utility, better economic uh, opportunity to earn and profit from, from those data sets. But longer term, I think there's an opportunity for more of like a, a medium layer, like a hot layer that's like sort of like more than IPFS pinned, more guarantees, but maybe not as um, hard to get to as, as sealed uh, Filecoin data. So there's a lot of work going on in that space. So, so like doing like, uh, yes, this section, this sector is like actively 
data that needs to be actively worked on, I'll unseal it and make it available to people I'm working with, and then I'll put it back to cold storage at some point. Yes, completely. And then a completely unrelated set of questions. Um, so I, we were, my team was working on Ethereum back in November, and we were working with Chainlink in order to do our Oracle queries um, for part of our proof process. Um, this seems like this is like a comparable solution uh, built on IPFS. How do you kind of see uh, this, like this project as it relates to something like Chainlink and bringing that functionality to FVM? Um, because we need oracles. <laughs> yeah, no, thank you for bringing that up. So I, I'm a huge fan of the work that Chainlink has done in the Oracle space. I mean, they've really like, Oracles have, have existed alongside Chainlink, but they've really led the forefront. So it's extremely important. And we were talking about this on our team. You know, what do we call this? Do we call it a bridge? Maybe it's kind of a bridge, maybe kind of not because bridge involves financial, you know, uh, uh, you know lending or financial bridging. Uh, but it's kind of an Oracle too because it's listening on chain and it's providing trusted, you know, results on chain. So, um, so, so maybe we need smart people to come up with a better name for this type of, of integration, um, this type of bridging off chain. Uh, but yes, I think using Bacoyao as a type of an Oracle is a use case in itself. And I think all these sort of, these, um, these middle layers between on-chain trustlessness and off-chain trustlessness and, and increasing the trust and the closeness between those, so you alleviate hacking issues and things like that are extremely important. Uh, Chainlink's doing a really good job of leading with their new uh, decentralized functions as a service uh, capability, which which I love. So I think we'll just see a lot more overlap in this space, and I think it's going to have to, like, there's so much opportunity for it to grow that it'll be more sophisticated and more, like, refined this time next year. So the last question, can you please tell why developers should go if they want to build applications on Lilypad? Ian, they have a question. Thank you for asking. Yes, uh, a, couple, a couple options. Please go to our Slack channel, uh, back of Yow Slack channel. We also um, we also have the Lilypad uh, GitHub repo, uh, the back of Yow GitHub repo. We have uh, issues they can raise there as well. Uh, we love to hear feedback, questions, ideas along the way. It's very much a community effort. <laughs>